Okay. Happy Father's Day, Dad. You're on. Thank you, my dude. And Grandpa. Hey, Grandpa. Happy Father's Day. And this Grandpa. Happy Father's Day. Blessed young man. We have two grandpas here today. Yeah, you could say. And the women also had something to do with them being fathers. It's relative. <laughs> well, I just wanted to say something special. What is it? Well, the last time you did a video that I was sort of in and out of was on our 60th wedding anniversary about a week ago. Yes. And I loved that video, but I didn't love my part in it because I ignored it. And all it takes is one click. I wasn't offended. Well, I was. I offended myself. I thought, how unkind when you have a grandson who's doing something that's so important to him and so difficult and complicated thing as you're doing and doing it well and I wouldn't I didn't have the time that day or the thought to say Levi I am so proud of you and I think your viewers need to know that. <coughs> I've known you for your whole life. And when you were much, much, much younger, I worried about you and I prayed for you as all your family members did. And now you have surpassed anything that we thought you would do or become. And you, your brain is so huge, you're able to... I don't know if your viewers even know that. Now tell me the number of creations that you have. I know you know the number. 15,000 plus that are accounted for. So there's some that aren't accounted for? They are still, they still exist. But you have I try to think of myself as like Lewis and Clark. They didn't invent prairie dogs, they just discovered them. Very good. That's what I meant by accounted for. So when, when you discover what, or you, or it makes itself known to you, and you see the attributes, and you see how he or she looks, mostly, she, mostly she. Well, not anymore, because if you consider, like an infinite population throughout infinite realities, the gender balance is obsolete. What does that mean? Does it mean it's even? Or? Obsolete means that there's not a point because it's infinite. Like, why would it matter? I don't know. Does that make sense? Yeah. Well, in any case, <clears throat> infinite or finite, you have these people, these creations. Can, if you had time, could you sit here and name each one of them? I don't think I'll be able to. Because? I don't have my uh, Levitt's Paradigm with me. Okay. But you do have an absolute photographic memory. It's not flawless. It's like, it's accurate but not flawless. Okay. In what, where do you see That's flaws? What I'm trying to reconcile in my head. Like, limitations in terms of one city. What are the odds that I would accurately name over 15,000 characters and creatures without any hesitation? <laughs> not, not very. Right. You're not, you're gonna, not going to say, oh yeah, I could do that. No. I, I wish I could, like how Walt Disney is able to name all of his creations. Yeah, but 15,000. How many creations did he have? I don't know, but he has a franchise after he passed away. Yeah, and others helping. He was pretty young when he passed away. We were watching a little video the other day about him. And mm. I kind of feel worried about whether or not I should trust Disney because I've heard rumors of how it's comparable to, like, Vought International, for example. About Fox International? Vought International. You've probably never heard of it. It's supposed to be a parody of Disney that... Instead of making yeah. cartoons, they make superheroes. I see. But what they don't tell you is that they're actually supervillains that pretend to be heroes. Well, right, so... 
Are you not required to trust Disney? I wish I could because I used to cherish them when I was a kid. But I really hope that people don't think that Walt Disney created Madame Shear. Because I've known a 10 year old boy named Bart who thought that he Bart created both. Bart? Bart. Bart, okay. He legitimately thought that Walt Disney created Spider Man and Star Wars when he clearly didn't. You know Bart Simpson? Confusion. Oh, yeah. I don't want anyone to think that Walt Disney created Madame Shear, for example, because... So what you're saying is you wouldn't want to join with them. I'll only do it if it's truly worth it, because I'm not entirely sure whether or not it would be. I, I've i heard how Disney is considered parasitic, and I just really... up a lot of other companies. Yeah, I just hope it's not... A but problem. that didn't start until after he died. Hmm. Interesting, huh? Well, in any case, I just wanted to be sure that you and... You were really young. You were pretty young. We had given you a book of dinosaurs. Dinosaurium? And you read through the whole book. Yeah, I remember that. I was my... It was my baptism. How many people get a dinosaur book for their baptism? Like, how often do people get baptized? It just depends. Oh, all right. well, that's, that's right. Because it, baptisms, from despite what I was told growing up, it's not that much of a priority. Well, we can disagree on that. Well, that. Well, I'm sorry. But I understand point, that it's crucial. Point, I'm just talking no, about no, in no, general. No, no. I know. I got it. We have different beliefs. <coughs> but when you were showing me that book after you had read through it quite quickly, and I said, well, what's on page 64? And you could say, oh, the sign of porca porca bosses. I don't know the names of it. We'd go there. That book introduced me to the Cryolophosaurus. Cryolophosaurus. You know every, every dinosaur by name, by attributes, and what page it was described on in that book. So that may not have been 15,000 dinosaurs, but it was an eye-opener for me, that how your brain worked. And I really think that's really cool. And now you have found a way to use your brain to be creative. And you're the creator with a big heart. Yeah, since I had a vision like, my mom had a vision of me before I was even born. It makes me feel like I should matter in this life. Because why else would that happen? You well, know, that's exactly right. And do you think you matter in this life? Do you know? Supposedly, you yes, but sometimes I've been stuck in a pit. And I'd like to be free from supposed pits. Well, we all would. We all would. Mm -hmm. I just don't want to be seen as another face in the crowd. I want to be seen as someone who matters in this life. What's the point of living this life if you can't do anything decent about it? Well, <clears throat> I don't know about thousands of people, but I know that you matter to me. And you always will. Honesty or charity? Oh, yeah. No charity here. Honest. Honest or polite? No, not polite. I just picked a big thing out of my tooth. I'm not a polite person. I'm so honest. And my heart is very full of love for you and gratitude for you. Because, well, okay, here's one reason I'm grateful for you. You have taught me many things. You have taught me to have faith Ooh, yummy. This is so and to good. have mm. understanding that goes beyond what I see, mm. beyond this little baby I held, beyond this big man you now are. How tall are you? 6'2". You know how tall I am? Does it matter? Five feet tall. Huh. I'm short. Is that ever a complaint? Mm. Is it a complaint to be 6'2"? It's all a matter of one's perspective. It's just who we are, right? Why ask uh, questions? Why not just have fun? There's a good point. I learned that from a house cat. <laughs> 
as another thing I appreciate about you. I have understood from what I've read and what I have observed is you're kind of in a minority of autistic young men who has a great sense of humor. And you do have a great sense of humor. That's just what I was told. <laughs> you were just told. So do you believe it? Like, you know, like, there are some things that I think is, like, trash, but I still consider it because otherwise no one would ever bring it up if it I didn't so exist. So you're talking about things you see that you could still laugh out that not, maybe not everybody would laugh at. Yeah, like, there's some stuff that just feels arbitrary. I just remember that, oh, a few years ago, you always had a new joke or a new riddle or something to share that was funny. You say, Grandma... Have you heard this? You need to eat the berries. Just love it. I just love it. Yes. It takes, good for you. Not everybody has a sense of humor. Not everybody has a sense of the <laughs> unusual or the kind of off the wall. But you do. Mm. And I don't know, maybe maybe one of these days that will show up in your creations. Maybe it already has and I've just missed it. For one day. If you could visit funny. my Leviathan universe physically, if you were legitimately there, what would be the first thing you'd like to do? Hide. Don't worry, since you're a VIP, you wouldn't have to worry about getting hurt. I'm the creator's grandmother. <laughs> well, that's just I'm a given. Scared. You're all so big. Three brains. I mean, they're just all smarter and bigger and stronger. And many of them are meaner, though not all of them are mean. I'm just trying to have some variety. I'm sorry. I like the variety. You go to eat three times a day. Huh. <laughs> you got this deep line right here between your eyebrows. Well, I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't think you paint it on. I think no. It why would I? Thinking seriously about things. It's relative. Why would I use paint? Why would you? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Somebody might have some. <laughs> I wish I could say I had painted on all my wrinkles. All things are less dreadful than they seem. That's true. That's really true. Like, for example, if you see a spider, do you see it as a threat? Or do you see it as something that's just going by with its time? Well, I know what you want me to say. You want me to say, I see it as a cute little creature and I should just let it go on its way. That's hard. Is that what you want Grandma to say? Well, I'm just trying to be uh, comprehensible for my audience. He's trying to find out how I would feel about spiders. Just, Another It's thing. the first example that came to mind. First example. Think Grandma knows that they eat flies and help reduce the insect population. Oh, do they? Mm -hmm. well, so if I let that big spider go, I might have few less flies. Mm -hmm. okay. Well, it's relative. Like, spiders drain blood from live victims, not out of spite, but out of self preservation. Sure, they're hungry. What about mice? Mice, they're just going by with their time. In fact, one of the greatest foods that mankind has ever eaten wasn't invented by a human, but by a rat. What the heck? What the heck? Yeah. Explain. More information. It happened in Paris, France, many years ago. Ah. The rat. The chef? Yeah. Why do you ask? Huh? Why do you ask? Why do I ask if he was a chef? Yeah. Because I think I saw that. Ratatouille. Chef Ratatouille. Oh, Ratatouille. Was that it? Does it matter? Oh, well, yeah, it does. If he was the only one who ever did that. Well, not anymore. He has his own restaurant. We had a pack rat in our house one day. Did you know that? I can, I can actually show you its picture, but I, I won't. It was quite pretty. Huh. But we had been gone, so we had been gone on a trip for about a week, and when we came back, we noticed that some things were just kind of moved, like a picture would be over on its side, or 
Yeah, it was mostly pictures. Things that were on shelves were just different. And then, <coughs> one night, I felt something across the foot of the bed. And it completely scared me. I mean, like I wasn't bigger than it. Of course I knew I was. But I couldn't see what it was. I had no idea what it was. Xenophobia. The fear of the unknown. Xenophobia. Right, right, exactly. I had the fear of the heavy, black, fast-running, unknown thing that had made it from one side of the bed to the other. So we set some traps and... No, nothing, but we... I, what we could tell something was going on because in fact and I can still show you we, we have this rack do you remember and you can turn it and it has vices stuck in the sides I don't recall that I'm sorry well, I'll point it out this time you're over you know what I'm talking about <coughs> one of the lids black plastic lid clearly had tooth marks all the way around it fun fact rats can chew through stainless steel without breaking their teeth Wow. Well, he never got the lid off. Well, that's just what I was he told. He never got into the garlic. <laughs> There's three parts of the world where Do you rats... Think he would have eaten the garlic if he could have gotten to it? If he wanted to. And then again, how could you tell its gender? Could have been... Well, but you just told me that that doesn't matter. Well, I'm just saying, like, I was just phrasing it. It was a unigender. So it's a hermaphrodite. It was a hermaphrodite. <laughs> that means it's both genders. And Grandpa got a big, a humane trap. And very cleverly put it where we thought this creature was going, because we had no clue what it was. <coughs> Could have been a cat. But it was busy every night anyway. When he brought it to me, I cried. It was absolutely be a beautiful creature. It was a cat rat. And we found, so then we got on the trail of looking in corners and behind him. We found behind the refrigerator, way back, <coughs> there was quite a collection of little things, little pins, shiny stuff, and, you know, pieces of uh, ribbon. Yeah. Anyway, we had a funeral and buried Peter or Petra or whatever its name might have been. And no one who dies is ever truly gone. Because it did not intend to be in the house. We had clearly left some door open while we were packing up the car to go on this trip. And it had just wandered in and was left with no food. We had no pets inside. There was nothing it could reach to eat. Couldn't even get the lid off on the garlic. Huh. <laughs> so that is my story. I'm sticking to it because it's the truth. That's fine. But that's all I know about mice and uh, ratatouille. So, Levi, I just want your readers to know that you are an incredible grandson. You're respectful, you're kind, you're considerate. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just really hope that I would leave my mark once I pass away because I know I just want to be remembered as someone who mattered in this life. Like, I know that I'm going to have people thousands of years in the future. Some of them would have no clue that I exist, and I just hope that I don't feel forsaken. Maybe we all have that hope. No one wants to be forgotten, and yet, very few people are remembered. Really. Because they have earned the right. And you want to be one of those who right. Yes. I understand. Like Stanley Martin Lieber, Howard Phillips, Howard Philip Lovecraft, uh, William Shakespeare, even, believe it or not, Walter Elias Disney. Who? Walter Elias Disney. Oh, well, Walt Disney. That's his full name. Why wouldn't I believe that? Of course, we'll always remember him as the person who wanted to bring family entertainment to the forefront. So, Levi, I just told your other grandpa and your 
mom that I am firmly convinced I'm going to live a very long time. <coughs> I already have, so I, I may be misunderstanding that feeling, as I am already 80. But I'm going to live longer than that, a lot longer. I won't live as long as you, but as long as I live, I will never forget you. <coughs> Yeah, and at least at some point you would never have to worry about a One thing. One person. When I stand up, oh, that's stand probably up true. At the very same time. Yeah, I just hope I'm qualified to spirit paradise despite all of my sins. You know? You're qualified, Levi. Sometimes I feel like I'm doomed to the rising sun. Doomed to the rising sun? There is a house in New Orleans they call the rising sun. And it's been the ruin of many a poor boy. And God, I know I'm one. You don't know that song? Oh yeah, I know that song. It's popular oh, yeah. when I was young. There is. Yeah. Yeah, that song is like my personal theme song because it shows that I might as well just accept it. Like, th what are the odds that I would be forgiven of my problems? Oh, now that is, that is a thought. But I wish I could take an eraser. And erase well, I have made some regrets and mistakes. The fact that I had a five-month intermission is a notable example. Well, Levi, you know what? There, there is not a human who has lived on this earth, including Walt Disney, who hasn't made mistakes. Some big, some obvious, some clearly seen, some unseen, some hidden. Some of the most wicked people are the people who look like they're the most righteous. Some of the most righteous people are the people we don't even see. We don't know who they are walking down the street. They might be like Mother Teresa. But I know, I know that you are a worthy, worthy son of God. However you define God, you are worthy to have a good, lovely, blessed afterlife. However you define that. You can't but then that again, you have to earn it. You can only earn so much. We, we don't get to heaven by our works. We get to heaven by our desires. Our desires to do good. We want to do good really badly, but we're thwarted in the process. Because temptation is part of this plan of salvation. That's true. Takes it right down to that big old bone complex there. It's just fixes it. And even if we can't overcome it always, the fact that we're fighting it. All kinds of stuff. So that's what that's what matters. So there was this cute poem read this morning in church. It was a poem about somebody at the bottom of a pit trying to get out, and they had built a ladder, and they got up as high as they could go, but they still couldn't get out. And that person just flat gave up, ended up at the bottom of the pit until they heard this voice saying, I know you have done all you could do. Here, I'll help you the rest of the way. So however you define God or the afterlife, and I know our definitions are a little different, and that's okay. but you do have a belief that there is something after this life. And I know there is someone who you're trying really hard to do the best you can to make the best of your life, to make a good life. And I know you are. And I know you're trying to be good to people. You're trying not to make mistakes. And nobody knows that better than God. He knows. That's all he expects. Yeah, that's fine. I know it's fine. I have to uh, turn this off at some point, so I apologize. Turn your battery down. Don't worry, it's two out of three. I'm just saying, like, eventually it's going to end up at one out of three. Plus, your arm is getting tired when I'm holding that. I don't want to sound like that kind of person. I'm just saying. <laughs> All right.
Okay, I hope you enjoy Don't the rest you. of your time.